Here we go. 2012. In a small city of Tartu, Estonia, I was riding my cool BMX bike and thought I was the dopest person with half of my front tooth missing. I was attending a vocational school to get my high school degree, but to also learn about mechatronics. Here I took my first electronics course to build my own Arduino board from scratch. Literally from scratch. We made those boards using thermo transferable paper that had the Arduino circuit on it and then ironed it into a circuit board. I mean, how crazy is that? We then soaked it in a ferric chloride and finally soldered all components on the board. I was fortunate enough to have my board working in the end and I was able to program it and just like play around with the switches and turn on the LEDs and do all of that with the Arduino programming language. And that was my first experience with embedded systems. 2013. After graduating vocational school, I worked at a press house as a technician in Estonia and learned a little bit about normal automatic systems and PLC programming. I also decided that I wanted to learn more about embedded systems, like really dive into it and get my undergrad degree. But I wanted to do it in style and overseas. So I hopped on my boat and rode myself all the way to Tacoma, Washington to start my community college adventures with a degree in electrical engineering. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. 2014. I didn't really do anything exceptional for the year of 2014, so skipping that. 2015. Anyone gone to college and just had this horrible teacher for your class? I had one of those experiences with Java. I don't know how I passed those Java classes, but I did. And thank you, Jesus, for that. I also joined our engineering club, 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 club to be on a sumo bot project. We competed and uh, we lost big, big time. Seriously, we had no idea what we were doing. Well, we thought we had an idea what we were doing, but once we got to the competition, we literally lost the first round. It was a good experience. We had a fun time, but yeah, in the, in the end of the day, we learned about teamwork, programming, electrical design, and some mechanical stuff. 2016, I transferred to Washington State University and had my first digital logic course and did some programming with FPGAs in Verilog HDL. 2017, I enjoyed the FPGA course so much that I became a TA for it for the next three semesters. They also gave me a $1,000 scholarship for TA per semester. Who cares about the money though? I took some classes for microcontrollers, embedded systems design, computer architecture, VLSI, and the rest of the courses were all power engineering oriented or something so on. I, I really can't remember all the courses I took. And I got my first internship there and I was sent to Nanjing, China to be a TA for an engineer from Digiland. This time I got to fly there and I didn't have to row my boat. After returning, I got another internship with my digital design professor at his new startup company called Real Digital. I helped to design first levels of online courses for them and learn more about Verilog HDL, C and C++ in embedded systems. I also started my senior design project this year where I wrote an embedded software to create an application interface to measure Lissage's wave pattern and determine consistencies of powders based on it. Sounds fancy, I know. But really, I had no idea what I was doing. Neither did my teammates. And I still don't. But who cares? We got a name. 2018. I graduated my electrical engineering degree and went to a place called Rochester, New York. I didn't have a job lined up. And I, I tried to get a job before I graduated here in Rochester but I couldn't. It was actually no one really wanted to hire me because I was an international student. For all international students out there, I get what you guys are going through, finding jobs that would sponsor you or even just hire you in the first place because you don't have a residency and it's, it's really tough. So I kept working for my internship company, Real Digital, until I was able to find a job here. And I also started doing YouTube videos at that time. And that's where I started one of my main channels. So I eventually found a company named Tilson Technology Management that hired me as a network engineer, but they still didn't want to sponsor me, which was okay for me because I knew I was gonna get sponsorship 
through my wife, I had no idea about network systems or RF engineering or anything like that that they were doing that. I was clueless, honestly, when I went there. I felt like I couldn't really contribute with anything. And as I learned about the processes, the stuff that they were doing, I noticed about the processes and inefficiencies of, the, of some of those processes, such as manual programming of RF radios and creating labels for them and so on. Like all of that is manual. And I was like, there should be a better way to do this. We should be able to make this happen in like a few minutes, do the programming automatically. So I started learning about Python and I found a way to automate the process and it just saved so much time for the company, a lot of money for the company and so on. 2019, Tilson's upper management noticed that I was able to automate all these things and they were like, well, Grady, we have like a lot of inefficient things that we're doing and at our other locations across the nation. Well, across the nation, I mean Maine, Maine, state of Maine, was able to find a way to automate some of their processes and things they were doing. And honestly, I love that thing. That was so much fun. And just like figuring out how to do like these inefficient things more efficiently and more better, like automation. I think that's gonna be the future. Like everything that we're doing, it's, it's gonna be automation with embedded systems, like some robotics type or anything like that, or it's just computer programs that will do stuff for you. That's, that's gonna be the future, a lot of automation. So I also got involved with a data conversion project uh, for, for a consulting gig with the company essentially, and helped with some automations there as well by doing scripts and so on to do the data conversions. It was very customized to that specific database that they were using. I learned that in order for me to be a consultant, I don't need to know everything. Thing. And I was able to learn a lot of things from the people I was working with. I was also able to get more familiar with Python programming, databases, and data cleaning and conversions. 2020. Tilson wanted me to start doing database management for them in the IT sector that they had. And I tried it out for a little bit and honestly, it felt really, really boring for me. So I was like, yeah, no, I don't want to deal with this. I can figure this stuff out but I don't think I can do this on a daily basis. Like maybe one, two projects here and there. And I decided to leave the company and join the company named Alstom, where I really learned a lot about software engineering processes, documentation, requirements, refactoring, bug fixes, a lot of working on a big team corporation environment, which was a very new experience for me. Although after a short nine months, I decided to leave the company because I wanted to work more on a new development, new technology stuff. So I joined a company called Black Box Biometrics, or now they're known as Airbus Defense Group because they got acquired. I joined the company and I started working on their research and development project for their, one of their newer blast gauges. And what is the blast gauge? The blast gauge is essentially a device that you use to measure a blast over pressure from an explosion. So they use it to either get the data of like how strong that explosion was and if that might have been causing some brain damage for you or anything like that. And this experience was way different for me just because the company was so small. So I had worked only on bigger companies before and now I was working with a very small team and so on and it was a really, really good experience. 2021, I started spearheading the embedded software development for a new generation blast gauge. I got to architect new software system that was based on a real-time operating system. I worked with multiple types of real-time operating systems such as FreeRTOS, RTX5, and ThreadX. I learned more about C, C++, and Python development. I did all of that on SDM and TI microcontrollers. I was also able to learn about making good software architecture and design choices for code management management and ultra low power systems. I also started my online master's in computer science program at Georgia Tech and I did one full class in graduate operating systems and I dropped out during my second semester. 2022. I wrapped up my work at Black Box Biometrics and decided to start my own adventure in being a full-time creator. And honestly, I, I feel very privileged to be in a position like this and to have an opportunity like this in the first place. So I'm very thankful for God for this opportunity. Honestly, it's, it's something I've dreamt of doing for a very long time. Like I was 14, 15 years old 
and I was creating YouTube videos. And I've been creating content on and off ever since. I hope you guys join me on this journey because journey without people and awesome subscribers like you guys wouldn't be uh, possible. Yeah, I just wanted to say thank you guys for even being subscribed right now in the first place and cheers. Make sure you hit the like button. Consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Other than that, I'm out of here. Bye.